Good day. Now today I will be discussing carbon monoxide as a ligand. Now we have dealt with metal complexes in inorganic 3, so please revise it if you have forgotten it. But in general we have said that a ligand has got extra electron density, so therefore it can act as a Lewis base. And your metal typically have a shortage of electron density so your metal can act as a Lewis acid so therefore we have a coordinative covalent bond between the ligand and your metal center now at when we look at um, your carbon monoxide here you have the molecular orbital diagram for carbon monoxide so if you now look at carbon, it's in group 4, so it's got 4 electrons. You look at oxygen, it's in group 6, it's got 6 electrons. So in total we have 10 electrons. So over here you have the 2s for the carbon and the 2p for the carbon. And the right hand side you have 2p for oxygen and the 2s for the oxygen. Now the orbital's energy for oxygen is lower than that of carbon because the electronegativity of the oxygen is higher for oxygen than for carbon. So the atomic orbitals of the carbon and the atomic orbitals of the oxygen is combining to form the molecular orbitals shown here in the middle for carbon monoxide. So we have a 1 sigma, 2 sigma and a 3 sigma and also a pi orbital. So those are molecular orbitals. So we have filled our 10 electrons in these orbitals. So the orbital that's got the highest energy, that's your three sigma that is filled, is called the HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbital. It's the orbital that's full with the highest energy. So this one is empty and it's got the lowest energy of all those that are empty. So that is called the LUMO the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So as I've said, we are considering our ligand as a Lewis base, which means it's got to donate electron density. So it's donating electron density from the HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbital, to a empty D orbital of your metal. So this, these two electrons can some of that electron density will be donated to your metal center. But now, carbon monoxide is rather special. As you can see, we have this LUMO, which is unoccupied. But it, so this carbon monoxide ca can also accept electron density from our metal. So it's working in two ways. So the carbon monoxide is giving electron density from its three sigma orbital, and it's accepting electron density from the metal in its bi star orbital. Now since it's receiving electron density in its bi star orbital, it's weakening the bond because you remember our bond order is the amount of electrons in the bonding orbitals over here minus the electrons in the antibonding orbital divided by two. So which means the more you are putting electrons in the pi star orbital, the lower your bond order, which means you are weakening your carbon oxygen bond. So, this means the more your metal center is bactonating in the pi star, the weaker the CO bond will become. So, just the same story again. Here we have our D orbital for the metal, and we have our carbon monoxide ligand. And here we have also another um, d orbital for our metal and carbon monoxide as our ligand. So here we are showing that the three sigma is donating electron density into a empty metal d orbital. And over here we are showing that we have a filled metal d orbital which are donating electron density into a empty pi star um, orbital of our carbon monoxide. So first of all, I just want to give you some a bit of um, general knowledge. I don't know if any of you are playing guitar or violin, but 
what we do is when we play we are putting our fingers over here on the string and as we make the string shorter the sound of the music becomes higher so a higher sound is a higher frequency so over here you can see what happens so here we don't have a finger on on this wires the string which means it's just vibrating like this if we put it in the middle we have this type of vibration and if we put it closer and closer and making the, the string shorter and shorter you'll see these more of these waves so we can count it over here we have five of this wave so in the same time period we have more of these waves and we can also see that the wavelength is becoming shorter here we have a very long wavelength here we have a very short wavelength so it, it tells us the shorter the string the shorter the wavelength and the higher the frequency so the same works for our bonds if we have a strong bond we have a short bond if we have a short bond it vibrates faster and we are using infrared to look at these vibrations so if it vibrates faster then we have a higher frequency and a higher wave number as observed by infrared okay now we're going to look at different metal um, complexes so here we have nickel and we have co which is your um, copper monoxide now it's a ligand it's called carbonyl so we have tetra carbonyl nickel and the oxidation state is zero in this case here we have tetra carbonyl cobalt minus one oxidation state here we have tetra carbonyl iron with two minus oxidation state and here we have hexacarbonyl manganese with a plus one oxidation state here we have hexacarbonyl chromium with a zero oxidation state and here we have hexacarbonyl vanadium with a minus one oxidation state okay now we're going to look at the infrared um, measurements of these different complexes so you can see all of them over here have four carbonyl ligands the only thing that's differing is the nickel and the cobalt and the iron but now if we measure the carbon monoxide vibration so the carbon oxygen vibration we can see those vibrations are very different so why are they different so if we now look at nickel you can see the nickel has got an oxidation state of zero where the cobalt has got an oxidation state of minus one so minus one means the cobalt has got a extra electron so now here we have iron with the oxidation state of minus two which means this iron has got even more electron density now when we looked at the carbon monoxide as a ligand we said the metal can donate electron density to the carbon monoxide so now this one has got two ele electrons extra so it can donate much much more electron density to the pi star orbital of your carbon monoxide so those that extra electron density is ending up in your pi star orbital now pi star means it's receiving extra electricity into the pi star, which is the anti-bonding orbital. So it's weakening your carbon monoxide bond. So if you have a weaker bond between your carbon and your oxygen, it means that bond will be longer. If that bond is longer, it will vibrate slower. So now we know it's vibrating slower and your um, f frequency and your wave number is directly proportional so which means if it if the bond is longer it vibrates slower and we will have a shorter wave number so just to recap our iron is donating more electron density because it's got an oxidation state of minus two it's got more electrons so it's donating more to the carbon monoxide because it's donating more to the carbon monoxide's pi star it's weakening the carbon oxygen bond because the carbon oxygen bond is weaker this bond is becoming longer and because it's becoming longer it means it's vibrating at a lower wave number okay let's move on to the other three examples here all three metal complexes got six carbon monoxide 
um, ligands. So those carbon monoxides are called carbonyls. So it's six of them. It's hexacarbonyl vanadium. Okay, over here we have manganese with an oxidation state of plus one. Here we have chrome with oxidation state of zero. So the manganese with oxidation state of plus one means it has lost an electron. Here we have vanadium with an oxidation state of minus one. So it means it's got a extra electron. So this vanadium has got more electrons than the chromium and the chromium has got more electrons than the manganese. So now the one with the most electron density can give more electrons and the one that has lost electron has got less electron density so it can not give so much electron density to your carbon monoxide. So this manganese is giving less electron density to the carbon monoxide so there are less electrons in your pi star and therefore your bond order will be higher. So this bond of the, of the carbon oxygen will be stronger for this complex because this manganese can give less electron density into the pi star of the carbon monoxide. So now because this carbon monoxide is there's less electron density in the pi star it means this carbon monoxide bond is stronger if the bond is stronger it means the bond length is shorter and therefore it will vibrate faster and therefore your wave number is higher in the case of the chromium